Every year, Rutgers fans will come out by the thousands to cheer on some of the finest athletes in the world. But what exactly separates the person doing the cheering from the person being cheered? What separates a good athlete from a great one? Um, i say the difference between an elite athlete and just being an athlete, it really takes, you really have to have a, a driving force. You really have to know what you want. You have to have short-term goals, long-term goals. Like everyone has goals, but some don't believe in it. Like you have to really believe in your goals. And um, you also like, when it comes down to practice time, you have to work hard. You can't complain. You can't um, go in with the mindset that you can't do it. Um, you just have to go out there, do it, give it your best. And like Nike says, train like your second. So like you train like your second, but compete like your first. So I think that's what really separates an average athlete from an elite athlete. Like just being um, disciplined and knowing what you want, how to get there, and knowing that in order to get there, you have to work hard. Psychologytoday.com says that the level of athletes is dependent on five categories, and most of them have nothing to do with physical talent. These categories are drive, confidence, calmness, focus, and emotions. I think it, it definitely takes this personal personal development. Like you have to make sure you take the time out to put put in practice on your own when uh, when nobody's watching, the coaches aren't watching. You have to take the time, the commitment, the dedication to um, make yourself better than the rest. Because when they're not training, you got to make sure you're training. I think that's what uh, distinguishes D1 player from anybody else. According to CBSNews.com, the average Division One male athlete devotes 39.1 hours per week to their respective sports during the season, and female athletes are shown to devote 35.5 hours a week to their sports during the season. The numbers almost equal the hours needed to fulfill a full-time job. So the next time you hear someone say that playing a sport is 90% mental, maybe you'll agree. Reporting from Rutgers University, I'm Anthony Rodriguez, RUTV.